Qua. Yes, that went better than the first time. Today I'm going to talk about imagination. I was having a discussion with a teacher at my school about imagination. I was just sat, casually, because we don't have to do that subject anymore, I'm not going to let out who it is. Um, I was just sat, casually, reading Harry Potter, like you do, reading all the chapters. And he said to me, I don't like Harry Potter, I hate it. And I thought, fair enough, people, I don't like Lord of the Rings. I thought he didn't like it for the obvious reasons of like, doesn't like the characters or the plot or the fighting in it or the logic side of it or just didn't like it as a thing he doesn't like. But no, he told me he doesn't like it because the stuff that happened in it hadn't actually happened. Well, obviously it's magic. Doesn't quite happen in life. But still, he doesn't like things that haven't actually happened in life. He doesn't like reading or watching or anything to do with imagination. Sounds like a bit of a Vernon, Vernon Dursley kind of character to me. And I got confused. How can you not like things that um, aren't real? Because to me, books and reading are a way for me to live. He said it was a form of escapism, and we should try and deal with the problems in our life rather than escaping. But if this represents my stress levels, and my stress levels are filled to the top of this jar, then if I hold it for a while, it's not too heavy. But the longer I hold it, the heavier it's going to get, till eventually my arm will ache and I will dry and go cry in a corner. But if I can just put it down for a while, for an hour or so, and read Harry Potter's, and escape, and go into a fantasy land where, okay, my problems might be bad, but at least I'm not being attacked by a hippogriff like Malfoy. Just putting it out there. And then, suddenly when I pick up the jar again, it's not as heavy as it was. It's much more bearable. People can relate to this. Take people doing DAV, for instance. When you first put on your bag, it's not too ha bad. But when you carry it around all day, it gets heavier and heavier and heavier until you, when you finally get to your campsite and put your bag down, you're like, oh, heaven. But then, when you put it back on in the morning, it's not as bad as it was when you took it off that night. So maybe we should just take an hour or so out to read or do whatever you need to do, or escape, or watch a film. But I still don't understand how imagination cannot be a good thing. Because once, everything was an idea. Everything came from someone's imagination. If my friend had never decided to stick pencils on a pot, I would never have this amazing jam jar, money box thing. If no one had ever thought to put rubber in a mould, I would never have rubber ducks. And if some clever spark had never decided to invent a camera, YouTube wouldn't exist. And how bad would that be? So, imagination is the beginning of dreams. And if you follow your dreams, you'll get onto the path that you want to be on. You need to be on. I strongly believe in destiny. And there is marked points, fixed points in time that cannot be changed. Like in Doctor Who. How sad does that sound? But if we just follow our dreams, I think we will be happy. Because you imagine what you create. And you create what you desire. So, read. Because books like Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone or The Prisoner of Azkaban or The Goblet of Fire or other books that aren't Harry Potter like Charlie and the Chocolate Factory or Awful Tale of Agatha Bleed. They're somebody's ideas and somebody's life works. Or not necessarily life works, but things that have made them happy. So make, maybe they'll make you happy. Just give it a go. For me, just read one page of a book and if you don't like it, Go back to doing whatever you want, but try. Bye.